the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. up to the nine foot homemade oak bar for yourself a cold one my name is chris this is my basement here in evergreen park and we're gonna do the ep podcast 30 minutes of good in a world of dumb that is brought to you by the first national bank of evergreen park they are dedicated to supporting this area with great banking tools friendly service they are a true community bank that provides our neighborhood with customized financial solutions like total access checking that is an account with free ATMs nationwide. I don't care what kind of cash machine you use, they're putting the money back in that you get charged by the machine, by the institution. Plus, when you open up a total access checking account today, you get $300 in the account. Open online at bankevergreenpark.com slash total access slash EP. $100 required to open, requirements to qualify, must use link to apply, member FDIC. This is a Friday release. It's a special weekend edition. I like to do this when I have a conversation with like one person, like a big in-depth thing. If this is not your cup of tea, we have a recent episode of the EP podcast up right now. Came out on Monday. If you missed it, go back and get it anywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. And remember to check out other podcasts on my network like Socks in the Basement, where I'm yelling about Tony La Russa because he seems to have lost his mind and Southside Pod covering the suburbs and the city area around Evergreen Park, going deeper, going and visiting restaurants and bars and breweries and talking to people that are having events. You can check that out as well. Anywhere podcasts can be found and always at SouthsidePod.com. But back to the EP podcast, John Brand has joined me at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar this week on the EP podcast. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me down here. Well, you know, I had this idea. I I was thinking to myself... It's been a while since I just have somebody that sits down here with me and I just bounce stuff off of, you know, I just, just chit chat, you know, and we hang at your place all the time. And I was like, I, I, I like John and I, I like drinking with John. And what's fun is that we're not actually drinking open outcry beer tonight. We're both drinking bourbon or a, it's a sour mash whiskey, but it's made like a bourbon with just the mash being a sour mash. Yeah. We changed it up a little bit. Yeah. This is, this is good. Thank yeah. you. So you like, before we get into the show, you, you like the, uh, the bourbons, like if you're not having a beer, what is it that you, you go to? Well, typically, uh, I'm a gin drinker. I typically go to gins, but in the last couple of years with, uh, with all these new, interesting and in- innovative bourbons that are coming on the market or that have been coming on the market, it's, sort of feels like craft beer a little bit and experimenting with with different whiskeys and bourbons has been has has gotten me a little bit more into into that genre and um it, for me it was a little bit of an acquired taste and it's a new hip thing like yeah. we, we're gonna have two distilleries by the end of the year that are actually craft distilleries in the south suburbs which is nuts that, that didn't even exist three pa- years ago the, one of them i think you're speaking of is pollyanna correct yes and then thornton which is the one that's on the Dixie Highway Brewery Trail with yep. you. And, yeah. you can, and you can get their spirits at our at our at our brewery as well. You can get the Thornton ones? Well, we, we do their gin. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have oh, their gin. You gotta get the pecan whiskey. I've you tried ever, it. If you ever oh, I've you tried got, it. If you it's had good. that at open outcry, I'd be in there putting it on a rock. It's good. We yeah. tried it. In fact, he's he's come over to the brewery before and we've sampled it together. Yeah. It's it's good. It's really good. But we do we do sell a lot of their gin. Gin's a big thing now. And and I think that, you know, I think part of it is that like Ryan Reynolds brought like he brought that avion gin like they were like hey would you do an ad for us and i think the story goes i I just watched him on netflix he was on uh david letterman's my next guest is and letterman asked him about it he goes they just wanted me to do like some advertising and i learned about it and i was like can i buy into your company i have a bunch of money and they're like yeah we'll take a bunch of money and he became like a part owner but like what it is is the american style of gin where they take out the juniper there's not as much in there and it's more of a drinkable you could put it on the rocks type of gin and that i mean when we talk i talked to the pollyanna guys on Southside pod recently that's the kind that they're putting in their distillery that's what you have i would imagine that i think thornton's almost the same way so there's an american style gin that's becoming a thing and i also see people putting gin in bourbon barrels like people put stouts in bourbon barrels so now this is becoming like you said like the the new craft beer craze is now the distilling craze i'm not an expert on distilling but it's my understanding that 
clearer spirits like vodkas and gins are the first spirits that you put out just because they don't age as, as, as long. Um, I think we've been serving the Thornton's gin for, for, for close to a year now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't sampled Pollyanna's. I, I've heard that they're just ready to release. They're just it. getting ready. They, they, yeah, they haven't put anything out yet. Okay, and no. you were just out there, right? I was out there. I got to try the uh, bourbon the day it came out of the first barrel. And how was it? It was well. It was young, but it was good. Yeah. I mean, they had their first four barrels that they filled, and as you went along, you realized they were learning as they were going along. Which like, you know, I mean, I would imagine the first time you brew beer in your garage or basement or kitchen, or you started brew, trying to home brew, all right? of the above, right. So you, when you first started, it wasn't what you wanted it to be. So you kept getting better with every batch because you figured out how to do the measurements and what you did, did did wrong and you got better at it. That's true. And it's the same thing, I think, with that first barrel of bourbon to their fourth one because they brought out samples from their first four barrels that they made. And you could see a difference between all four of them, even though they were all done within like a week's time. Is the distillery in Lamont? Yeah. So they're, they're actually going to be like a block from their actual brewery. They have three breweries, but that's their original brewery is the one in Lamont. And then they're gonna, about a block away right there in downtown Lamont. They Pollyanna have a does a really nice yeah. job. Their beer, their beers in general are just fantastic. And it, when we opened, when we launched back in 2017, we were selling a lot of Pollyanna. Yeah. A lot of Pollyanna beer. So, so let's go back to that because I'm curious about that. So you, you had Open Outcry. I remember when it opened. Okay. I remember going in there right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember uh, I was just starting my podcast. Network at the same time that you you July were July the summer of seventeen. I w- and I started my network in the summer of eighteen. So okay. you had just you were still pretty new, and I had just kind of started my network. And I remember I walked in there, and you may have had a couple of things on tap. This is before Will Turner comes along. Mm-hmm. Okay, he was with you for a long time, and mm-hmm. now you have a, you have a new brewer that's mm-hmm. in there. Okay, and but you had maybe two beers on tap, and everything was a guest tap. I remember, I remember, I remember feeling like you were just starting out. What was that like when you first started? Because a lot of people talk about how they want a brewery in Evergreen Park. We just had Kelly Burke on the show, the mayor in here, and she revealed the number one thing when they did the survey of Evergreen Park residents that people wanted in Evergreen Park was a brewery. So I guarantee you there were people that heard that who were like, dude, we should start a brewery. (laughs) But it takes a while, right? So take take me through what that's like at the beginning. Opening up a brewery is a very capital intensive process, and it's expensive. And when you open up a brewery, you're you unless you're well financed, you're penny pinching, or you're, you're you're trying to be you're trying to be as efficient with the dollars you spend as much as possible. The b- number one. When you ask anybody that's opened up a brewery and you you said, what would you do differently? Always the number one response you get is, I wish I would have gone a little bit bigger. And that was no different for us. We didn't, you do, you can Because early on you're, you're investing and you know you're not going to make money right away because you have to, you have to make the product before you can sell the product, right? And so, and, and so at the time you're sitting there going, okay, this is what I have and we'll build on later. But you find out, Maybe I should have just started as big as humanly well, you, possible. Well, you're doing the calculus, and, and, you, and you, you're doing the calculus, and you understand how expensive and capital intensive the process is of opening up a brewery, and there's no guarantee that you're going to be successful. So you hedge a little bit, and you could go big, uh, or you can go medium, or you can go small, and you, there's an incentive to go medium or small because if it doesn't work, you're you, you know you don't want to you don't want to lose all your money, right? right. So and, and stainless steel is incredibly expensive. Tanks. That's the only material you're using, right? You have to use stainless steel because aluminum's a dirty metal and it comes off in things. And like in kitchens, people use different metals for different kinds of dishes. But for you, it's got to be steel. You're running a yeah. Stainless is all you typically want your beer to touch in, right. in, a, in a brewery. And um, uh, and for us, the other challenge was we're we're on Western Avenue and space is a premium. So we didn't have a lot of square footage to work with. So we opened up with a with a with a brew house that we thought was going to. Uh, allow us to produce or manufacture enough beer for the first couple of years. And then if we were lucky to grow, we would, we would grow. But within the first two or three weeks, we realized that we undersized that brewery. And it was a challenge for the first year or so to produce enough liquid to sell, to keep, you know, our goal is always to have 10, minimum of 10 beers on draft. But when we're, well, but because of the size of our brewery and the square footage that we're working with, 
it just wasn't possible at times when we when we first opened and there were lines out the door and everyone wanted to try your beer. Uh, so if you're opening up a brewery, you always, you know, you think you're going to be a seven barrel brew house or a 10 barrel brew house. If you're opening up a brewery, you probably understand what that means. Probably go with the higher end of the projection. However, I will say that craft is slowing down. The growth, the, the organic growth in craft beer is slowing down. Was it the pandemic that did it? Because I know that you had a lot of breweries in Chicago that closed. So did that did that cause it, or do you think that it's because there's a new hip thing with people are getting into the cocktails and they're getting into the distilleries? All the above, we, all the above, it, the know. legalization of cannabis. There, there's there's tons of macro factors that uh, influence what, like why certain industries grow and or contract. And uh, beer, generally for the last decade or so, has been uh, contracting because it's competing with spirits and. Uh, seltzers and uh, cannabis and, and and other and other type of um, product adult products that that people are now trying or experimenting with and it's it's a very very competitive space it's similar to like maybe entertainment industry you used to have like your cable TV and you used to have like the movies for sure and, and now you got fifteen thousand streaming services yep. and half of them are trying to go free with a model where you get a commercial every once in a while it's fragmented. it does fragment and there's things. and there's only so many consumer dollars to go around yeah and um and of course consumers are fickle right chasing the latest thing or what's the hottest trend is is also part of the equation is as well and um Craft beer is still strong. Uh, if you make great beer, you're, you're going to sell that beer. If you have a good product and uh, you market that right and you're providing value to your customers, I don't care, and you're in a competitive space like beer or any other consumer product, if you make a good product and you're delivering value, you will be successful. But you have to you have to make a good product consistently. Right. And you have to provide great service in selling that. And um, that is really, really hard to do. It takes a tremendous amount of effort. It tra- takes a tremendous amount of endurance. It takes a, tr- a very high pain threshold, uh, and and not everybody is cut out for that. So if somebody said, like, they heard what the mayor said, like, I'm going to start a brewery, it's not a simple thing to do. It is kind of becoming a flooded market. It's not impossible, I would imagine, for somebody to go and try it. You would never tell somebody, don't go do it, right? No, of but course be, not. If but, you, you, but, it, but it is not, it's not as easy as, we're going to start making beer. Like there, there's a lot that goes into starting a brewery. You have to be committed. You have yeah. to have, you have to have a, you know, it's cliche to say you start your own business and you do something you love. But when it comes to something that requires the effort like this, you have to truly love beer. You have to love serving people. You have to be comfortable with failures. You have to be comfortable with um, negative feedback, be, have it, have thick skin, you have to grind and it, it's not easy, but it doesn't just because it is a saturated market or a mat- I, let's not use the word saturated. It's a maturing market, right? Craft beer is a maturing market and the growth has that exponential growth has slowed. It doesn't matter if you, if you, if you are good at what you do and you make a great product and you connect with, especially locally, if you connect with your local community and uh, you're delivering value to them, you will be successful. But you know, ball games with the kids, um, you know, dinners with the family five nights a week, uh, hanging out at, at grandma's birthday party on the weekend, f- forget all that. It ain't happening. You have to be committed. You have to be obsessed with what it is you're doing. And it's not just beer. It's any small, any small business, especially, especially in the restaurant industry or the beer industry or some industry where you're serving the public seven days a week. Right. Unless you're going to have multiple partners, I would imagine that's something you just have to live with. And that present having multiple partners presents its own challenges. It does. It does. I've noticed that now in these years that I've been doing this podcast and meeting people that own, you know, restaurants and bars, the guys that are doing it on their own, like it's a lot easier for them than when they have the partners. The moment you see like, oh, there's three, four people that own this thing, it looks like it is just a yeah. spider web of problems. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial Representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708-425-1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he 
can help you protect them. Do you see this thing behind the bar? You got to look over the top here. A buddy of mine sent me a beer making kit. You can see it on the ground there in, in a box. Oh, so when was yeah. the last time that you ever, I'm sure when <laughs> you, before you started your brewery, you would get these things, right? I, well, I home brewed for 15 years before we opened up the brewery. And I was brewing for, for the couple of years leading up to opening Open Outcry. I was home. I was brewing in my house at least once a week. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I've gone through, I've gone through a lot of those. How drunk you getting when you're brewing in your own house? I, I, uh, at first, <laughs> at first when it was a hobby, it was about calling your buddies over and drinking. Yeah. The last couple of years leading up to it. And it started to feel like, like not just because you're ramping up to start a business, but you became passionate about something and you wanted to make the best beer possible. I wasn't drinking on brew days at all. I was focused. I was taking notes. I had my spreadsheets out. I was, I was, Measuring once, measuring t- twice, measuring three times. And uh, I noticed that if I had had a couple beers while doing that, uh, I wasn't going to um, I wasn't going to make a beer that I was proud of. So I, I stopped drinking when I was home brewing the last four or five years. But hey, going back to your original question, if somebody wants, Evergreen Park is, I've said this many times on your shows, that this community is an amazing community. They support their local businesses. Uh, there is an appetite for alcohol around here. You're on, you're on the south it side of Chicago. It seems that way. It seems like people drink here. It's right. weird, but yes. they do. I just drove through Circle Park, and there must have been 300 people out there yeah. playing softball and drinking beers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It, like that's the funny thing. Like it's like it, it, according to the sign, you can't. But yeah. everybody's kind of doing it. It's at all the parks, and people walk around and do things. You never see a lot of problems with it. But I mean, it is it is a thing that like here, people here like to have a good time. Yes. I mean, think about it. You have a podcast for your your community and the guy does it at his bar. Like, I mean, if that doesn't tell you what kind of community it is, I mean, that's, I mean, you don't need to drink to have fun kids, but this, this, this community is kind of into that. Equally important as you learn when you start any business you have in Evergreen Park, you have the support of your local government. What, what Mayor Burke has done or uh, is doing and the support that she provides uh, small business or, the priority that she's placed on trying to attract business to Evergreen Park, and I and I know this because I, I I I chat with Mayor Burke occasionally. Uh, you have the support of her that that goes a long way. If you're going to enter the space, just be prepared to work and provide good products and and serve your community consistently. It's a lot of work, but it could be done. You now have within I don't know ten mile radius. You have how many breweries? Right? You have you have um, uh, one. You have one allegiance you have open outcry there are short, there are chicago horse ridge you thief. have you you have horse thief and you have blue island, blue blue island company, i guess those would be right? the ones that i would say that were in close proximity there are in, in by the way right if you added the four of us up the amount of barrels that we produce versus the amount of beer that is consumed in evergreen park and beverly morgan park mount greenwood oak lawn all these neighborhoods around Mar- marina park we are a rounding error for the total beer that's consumed in this area. There's a lot so of beer that's consumed. There's a lot of beer. Oh, there's consumed. a lot of people. Yeah. Right. We're rounding errors, right? Uh, so there's always, if the beer is good and your service is good, your brand is good, there's always room for more players, but you bet you have to be ready to work your ass off. That's awesome. It's really interesting to me. You know, I know I, we sat down, I wasn't sure what we're, you know, what we we're going to talk about, but I find it fascinating just based off of what the, the mayor had talked about when she was on the show last and the fact that people were in the breweries and I have you sitting here, I was like, well, I got to ask him this question. I got to kind of figure this out. Like, you know, what is it like starting it? And, uh, you know, I think, I think also the fact that we were trying what may be the next craze, would you ever go into distilling? Would you ever do that? Probably not. No, I, I, for one reason, I just don't, I, I just don't have a passion for it. I want to do the things that I like doing. I like, I like pizza. I like beer. And that's what I like. That's and like I, when people I, say, hey, why don't you do video podcast or do this? And I go, I don't know. I, I like radio. Yeah. Like I'm a radio head. I, I loved radio when I was a kid. I loved radio uh, when I was when I was getting older. When I got a chance to do radio, I fell in love with it. I put more effort into my morning radio shows than I put into anything in my entire life, maybe save raising my kids. And and to be honest with you, there are times where I would be like, ah, their mother will get them this week. There's, I never did that with radio. Like it was, it's a passion for so me. So do what you like. Yeah. There's plenty of market share. So for us, for example, right, I want to continue to grow our brand and our footprint in beer and in pizza and be in a place where if you got three or four different bars, restaurants, breweries around here, that we're part of that rotation. There's plenty of discretionary dollars 
to go around. And when I talk to other restaurant owners or other brewery owners, like that's always been what I've said. There's plenty of dollars to go so around. So you don't feel but, a competition. You don't feel like I, if, if like you, I think you've said this to me before because you know it because I do Southside Pot, I go to other breweries. Okay. And I always, but I always feel like I'm cheating on you when I'm not around them. Like, cause we're friends. We become friends over the years. That's true. And, and, and that's the thing. We, we, that's John true. and I have really become friends over the years. And when I go and I do something in another brewery and I tell him about it, I'm always like, oh, he's probably so upset I spent Friday night at this other place because I was doing something for the show or whatever and i'm always like oh he's gonna be mad at me i wasn't at all of course not that's silly to to expect somebody to come to your business every time they leave the house is just ridiculous right i'm not afraid of competition if 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 you like it it makes you better it drives you you're always looking for ways to improve your business to make you uh a desirable bar restaurant or brewery to visit as part of the families around here is the their their rotation for uh, dining out and spending their discretionary dollars. Well, you're what? my family brewery. I will tell you this: when I, when I, if I had to pick, like, when I think about my rotation of restaurants and bars and 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 entertainment dollar, okay, I I go in there for a couple different reasons. I'll go in there sometimes because I like your beer, number one, and I'm a member of the Mug Club now, and I like to sit there, especially in the summertime when those garage doors are open and you can feel the breeze coming off the street on Western Avenue, or I can sit upstairs up on the roof. Okay. And, and you've always had like a cool atmosphere in the, in the fall and in the winter. But one of the things that I will do, you're in, you're like at the top of the list. When I go family place, Thank when you. I want to bring, I appreciate that. Thank you know, you. It's, it's the honest truth. When I want to bring the two teenagers and I want to bring the six year old, there's something for all of them. Like my daughter who has more of a refined taste as to what she wants to eat. And she's like, I don't want to eat pizza. I'm like, fine. They got some really good sandwiches here. They got, I mean, and she loves it. And then I can go and then pizza, we can get like the pizzas and they're small enough that like the one that likes the hot spicy food, it's 14 years old, picks out one. He goes, Dale, you split this one with me with the peppers in it. I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. And then the other one gets something else. And then my wife likes it because she could pick out a beer and she feels like she's out on a Saturday night. Like that's, I, I think that middle-aged women love to be out. Like they want to be out. They, they don't want to be sitting in their home on their couch. So it satisfies something for every single person in the family when right. I go to your place. So you end up being the spot where I'm like, well, I want to take you guys out. Where do you want to go? I and just, the kids even will say now open outcry. Uh, my uh, my goal is just to be, is to, is to deliver enough value and build up enough trust with customers so that we're part of the rotation. So if your rotation locally is, I'm just going to throw some names out there because these are the places I go, right. like Rose Angeles. Great pizza or, place. One of the best pizza places in the entirety of the world. I exactly. love Rose Angeles. M- Milano's, Baracco's, Horse Thief, Blue Eye. Like as long as we're part of that conversation when a family's walking out the door, like where are we going tonight? Yeah. That's good enough for me. Here, here's what I have found that is a bit is sort of a weird nuanced challenge of operating a bar, restaurant, or brewery in Morgan Park, Beverly, Mount Greenwood, Evergreen Park, is that there is, and I just heard I just did a beer fest last week, and I hear this a lot around here. When people say, uh, I don't go out on I don't dine out on Western Avenue, or I'm not gonna spend money on Western or on, on the South side. I, I just go downtown or I go out to Orland or I go out to Tinley or I go out to Lamont. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't understand it. I, there's so many hardworking restaurant and bar owners on Western Avenue on 95th street on 111th and people that uh, are employing between all of us, the, the hundreds of people that we employ that are part of this community. When I hear that, it's a, it's a little, a little demoralizing, but, but what makes it up for it though is the other segment of the population that goes out of their way to to spend money or invest money in their local their local business. Oh, there's a loyalty. There, there's the, a loyalty on the on on the south side with some people where they won't go anywhere they except won't go anywhere for their else. local business. That's exactly right. right. And we yeah. saw that during the pandemic, yeah. right? Where where we had customers coming in buying gift cards, not because they wanted to redeem the gift cards, just because they wanted to inject money. In the place. They didn't want you to go away. They didn't want us to go away. I remember my but, wife being very concerned about certain places that were going to go away. Right. And when so, and when a place went away, because I remember like the, the place that I enjoyed going into, I always liked going into the Red Palm in, in Evergreen. Yeah, great place. And it, it closed because of the pandemic. I remember, I remember talking with Mike Nix over there when the pandemic hit, and I felt bad for him. And I remember what he was going through there. And Mike's a great guy. But that was this thing that like, like when that went away, it, it hurt, you know? And I think that there were... I think that was a thing. There were people that when the pandemic was going on for all any fears that they had, especially in the early days, it was like, 
these places that I care about are going to go away. Right. And I don't want that. I want this to end one day and I want to go back to the place that I used to go to. I want to, I don't want that ripped away while I'm gone. And I, I feel like there were a lot of people that said that, like, I remember that was a thing. My wife made it a thing. Like we had a rotation of places we ordered from because she's like, I'm not, I'm not losing these places. A lot of people did. Yeah. A lot of people did. We were the beneficiary of that. And so was every small business on Western and in the neighborhoods and, uh, the gratitude you have for that is 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 incredible. B- believe me, look, I'm not, I am not. This isn't something I think about or 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 get angry about or worry about or. But I hear it enough that I we're having this conversation about running a business or opening up a business on the south side. You will like you will hear this. You will hear that people don't want to spend money in the neighborhood, and I've never completely understood that. Don't spend money if you think we suck. Then tell us why we suck so we can fix it. Right. right. Um, but to blanket statements like I don't go south of 103rd or um, I'm just not going to I just don't spend money in, in the neighborhood. I'll, I'd rather go to I'd rather go to on town. Right. Or, or the thing that really drives you nuts. I don't eat wood fire pizza. I, it doesn't bother me. Come on. It doesn't bother. It doesn't you? bother me. Uh, if I've you seen don't, that look, before when somebody throws like a comment in there like that's not Chicago pizza. That's got to drive you nuts. No, it doesn't drive me nuts. See, I, I like you. See, here's it, a funny thing. Like It doesn't. Me, to me, Chris, I'm not making it up. It doesn't drive me nuts. There's so many good tavern style pizza places that have been around for so long that have served this community for so long. I understand old habits. Um, it, it, people go with what they're familiar with. Right? See, but like to it, me, I always sit there and I say, well, you, you got to broaden your your horizons a little bit more like that. that it, like like I probably would have thought that way when I was like a kid. You know, that, that it feels like that. But I, I don't know. After after living all over the country, being a South Sider who lived all over the country and came back, there are a few different styles of things that it's not wrong to try. This is part you of know, the, it's not wrong to try other things. This is part of that conversation about being an entrepreneur and not letting those sort of things eat you up or influence you too much. Because if you do, you will not last long as an entrepreneur. You have to grow a thick skin uh, quickly, or you have to roll with those sort of things quickly because there's just, there's so many, look at the demographics. How many people, how many, how many residents are there within a, you know, a five mile radius of say West 109th and Western Avenue, right? Right. A lot. Yeah. Right. Not everybody has to like fire pizza and that's okay. That's okay. But, um, I would like for you to give us a shot at least once. That'd it's, be cool. You know what right? it is? Right? I, right. I feel like I feel like small business is very similar to when I was in the radio industry. I'll tell you that right now. Is that like you were never going to get everybody to like your show. But as of long as not. as long as a certain amount liked it and you were the number one person, then you were the one that was you you made more money and you were you were successful. With this podcast, for example, there's seven thousand households at Evergreen Park. If three thousand to thirty five hundred of them check out the EP podcast. I don't worry about the other 3,500 that didn't listen that's to it. That's a good business. Because that's because the thing right. is, is that there's a there's a large chunk that are listening to what's going on. And that, and, and that right there, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who would get into all 7,000 houses. And if you are, and if you let that affect you too much, then you shouldn't probably start a business, your own business. Right. You probably, if you can't, if you can't manage that, by the way, right. Uh, I'm not perfect. I mean, there's, there's, there's the stress and the worry and all that stuff that comes along with running a business. And I got to make payroll every two weeks for the 44 people that work for us. And, um, you know, sometimes it, you know, it'll get to you a little bit, but you do have to take a step back and say, Hey, look, not everyone's got to like me. Not everyone's got to like this brand. Not everyone's got to like craft beer, but there's plenty of other people that do. And you got to, you just got to keep grinding and, building brand and one day they're, they'll walk into place and they'll give it a shot. And if you do a good job and if you're on your game that day and your servers provide good service and they feel good walking out of the place, then you got a shot at them coming back. John Brand's Open Outcry is at 10934 Southwestern Avenue. They've got great pizza. They've got good people working there. They are a great environment. They've got an awesome rooftop bar. They've got an incredible setup and they make really good craft beer. And John takes it personally trying to make sure that he's providing you with a good experience. We and, do the best we can. Oh, for sure. I, I know sure. you do. And we're not, and by the way, we're not always successful, right? We, we have bad Wiz. nights like every, like everybody else. Wiz, you know why, how many people I've ticked off doing this podcast? The a list, lot. The list is long and distinguished. Because you are a Southside Jagoff <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Openoutcrybrewing.com. Check them out. Thanks, bud. Look at all those people in this great suburb driving down 95th and Ked Z. What a great place 
It's called Evergreen Park, but we know it better as the EP. We're known for more than just the Unabomber. Remember Ted Kaczynski? You guys might even remember that big old rooster on 95th Street. It's all part of EP's history. So listen up to the EP podcast. You might be asking why. Because we talk about all things and we celebrate all the great things in the 60805. It's the EP podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP podcast. Evergreen Park.